Hi, y'all. Well, the cleanup of the ice storm has begun. Thank God for the grapple on this LS tractor. Got a video about another LS tractor, and it sure has been useful. Uh, the ice storm has passed, and the power is still out. But if you saw my video from yesterday, I showed uh, why I chose this 7,000 watt inverter generator by Champion. Can't see that it's by Champion because I peel all the stickers off of these things when I buy them because eventually they start to peel off anyway and then you can't get them off. So I go ahead and peel them off while they're fresh, except for the important stickers. Now, I described uh, why I chose this generator. It's a 7,000 watt generator. And, I, and, and I, I chose that based on low fuel consumption so that I could be without power for a long time without running out of power. Rona, come here. Come here, girl. Come here, girl. Don't be tearing that up. So, um, but I failed to tell you something that's really important. These generators come with a neutral ground bond inside them. And when you use these generators as a whole home backup generator, uh, you need to remove that ground neutral bond inside the machine. And in the case of this machine and many others, you can go online and there'll be a YouTube video available for how to do that, how to remove this panel and go inside and pull that jumper wire out. Now that's a pain to go back and forth, when you want to use this as a standalone generator, you need that ground neutral bond in there. But uh, what I've done is I've taken a 30 amp plug, four conductor plug, the same type of plug that you'd use to hook up the house. And I've got that in there and, and I've taken this plug and inside it, I've run a jumper wire from the ground to the neutral, which it reestablishes my ground neutral bond when this is used as a standalone generator. When it's used as anything else, you need to, when it's used to run the house, you need to not have that ground neutral bond. Really important. I'm sorry I left it out of the video. Was not at my best, I guess. So, today's video, I want to talk to you about how you can make a generator like this at 7,000 watts. You know, that's just under 30 amps, how can you make this run your air conditioning system? Rona, you're bothering your mama again. Come over here. So there's a couple of things you got to know in order to be able to run your house, including air conditioning, on a generator of this size without tripping the breakers. And so the first thing you need to do, if you're using a standard air conditioning system, uh, this is not the case if you have a variable speed drive, a variable drive uh, like a ductless mini split system. If you have a system like that, they ramp up slowly and, the, and they won't create a problem for you. But if you have a standard air conditioning system like most of us do, or heat pump, in the case right now we're running the heat pump for heat, and so if you have that type of system, you need to install an easy start. And, and they have hard start kits and soft start kits and get the easy start. I don't have a link at the bottom. Just go online and look for the easy start and find the one that's for the size unit you have and buy the thing. Uh, it'll cost you a couple of hundred dollars. It will make your compressor last longer, it will pay for itself. But in the case of being able to start the unit up with a generator like this, it's critically important. Get the easy start. There are good videos online. I thought about making one, and maybe I still would, but there are good videos online about how to install the easy start. The only thing I would do different than most of those people do is I was able to put mine inside the unit. I found room to move a little something around and get that unit inside the box of my air conditioning compressor outdoors, which means it's not out in the sunshine 
getting all sun faded and beat up. And the instructions are fairly easy to follow if you're handy. If you're watching my channel, you're probably handy, at least to some degree, because it, we do a lot of DIY here. Install that unit, and my running, uh, my startup amps jumped from, they went from 54 amps, which kicks this off in no time, to 18 amps. It also has Bluetooth. You can look on your phone and you can watch the number of amps that it requires. And what it does, that unit will take the first five startups and it will learn. And each one will require less amperage to start it up because the unit learns your motor and adjusts itself in the, in the intelligence software, adjusts itself to start up your unit with the least disruption to the coil in the motor and with the fewest amps uh, that you can get away with. So we're down around 18 amps to start it up now, and that is great. Um, there's a couple of other things. If you use a heat pump and you have what I call a hairdryer, a resistance heat backup heat unit in that fan coil unit, that runs 10 kW, you're not gonna get it off of one of these. You need to not have one of those or disconnect it inside the unit. I don't install them in any of the homes that I build. The air conditioning systems, that the heat pumps that we can buy now operate at really low temperatures well. And they, uh, you know, I'm in Texas, really low temperatures for me is different than what it would be for you but they really do have good units that can operate down into the teens or five degrees even um, and still make heat. You might not be very efficient at that temperature, but I see no need to have a 10 kW resistance heat strip that, that has no efficiency beyond a COP of one. There's no reason to have that 10,000 watt hair dryer in your air conditioning system. So disconnect that so that you can run it off this generator. There's one other problem though. And this one you can't get around. Those heat pumps, when they operate in cold temperatures, they go into defrost mode so the outside unit won't freeze up. When it does, it's gonna overload a generator like this just because it's got some resistance heat that it uses to defrost the outside coil. The way we get around that is I set this unit up and I, if I wanna heat with it, I go in there every 20 minutes. It might be less in really cold temperatures. You can get away with more in warmer temperatures, but in freezing temperatures, I go in every 20 minutes, turn the unit off and then back on It'll have a five minute delay for the compressor to start up and it will, over time, heat your house up. If you want a generator that is large enough, oversized enough to be able to handle that kind of intermittent high load, then you're going to be buying a, a much larger generator and you're going to go through gasoline much faster. If you can run to town and get gasoline, that's fine, but if you're trying to plan for a long-term grid down possibility like we sometimes see, and getting gasoline would be a problem, then this is the better way to go. And uh, we don't find it that inconvenient to be able to have heat and only be burning a half a gallon or six tenths of a gallon of gasoline per hour is great. So that's what I wanted to go over with you today. I have another one coming up soon, maybe today or tomorrow, but that's the one for today. How can you run your, and in the, and in the summertime, you don't have that defrost mode and it'll work just fine off of this generator as long as you put that easy start in there. All right, that's it, y'all. Thanks for watching. Please like this video. Go, remember, go down there and click on that like. It's the best way you can support my channel. The algorithm loves it when you like me. You like me, algorithm loves it. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one.
Bye-bye.